and hello and welcome back to Touchstones TV with me, Professor Jiggit. Now waiting in the corner of the room is of course our mystery history chest. And deep within the mystery history chest are the sands of time. And now, as you know, because you've been following us all week, haven't you? Yes, you have, yes. You know, deep in the sands of time, are a collection of historic items. Now, these items could be from any point in time. It all depends on what we are learning today. So, my question to you is, what are we learning about? Uh, oh, we need a clue, don't we? Yes, of course, yes, you know. We need to go find a clue. So come on, get off your bottoms, let's go find a clue. and spangly and clinky. Can you hear it? Ooh, it looks like I'm wearing a nice big scaly lizard snaky dragon suit. Look at it go. This is mail made up of lots of tiny rings, tiny chains of metal, yes, used to protect one's body. It's also a good clue to what we are learning today. So, what kind of items will we find in the mystery history chest? Yes, this is our clue. Hmm. What point in history will we be studying today with our clue? What do you reckon? Industrial Revolution! Get out of town! No! Ooh. Of course, yes. Anglo-Saxon Britain! Yes! Now that means inside the mystery history chest there'll be items and objects and artifacts relating to Anglo-Saxon Britain. Which means there's only one more thing to do. Go and dig him up like, come on! <laughs> items were wonderful, weren't they? I think we should explore them now. Now, before we have a look at the items, let's have a little discussion about who the Anglo-Saxons were. The Anglo-Saxons came to Britain from Europe. Do you know which countries they came from? Spain? Get out of town. No, not even Italy. No, that's the Romans. Yes, of course. The Anglo-Saxons came to Britain from Denmark, the Netherlands and Northern Germany. Germany, yes. And they came over to Britain on boats because someone had just left Britain. There was a type of people that was protecting Britain. And then they left, they went back home, they had enough. Who was it? Of course, it was the Romans, yes. We had the Celts, we had the Romans, the Romans went, and so the Anglo-Saxons came. And they came because in Britain we have amazing Fantastic farmland. The Romans came to make an empire for power. Anglo-Saxons came over to Britain so they could farm. And so, 
Anglo-Saxon society started with the farmers, with the peasants. And when they came over, they built their houses. Now, the Romans built lovely uh, stone houses with lovely stone tiled floors. Well, the Anglo-Saxons don't want no stone. No, they're going to build houses out of wood. And so they went to the forest and they found an oak and they a chopper, 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 knocked down an oak, ooh, used the oak as a big pillar and they squashed it into the ground uh, 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 in a nice big circle. Then they went back to the woods and got some willow and some hazel and some birch and chopped that down and then they wove the bendy wood around the strong oak pillars to make a circle. They got a nice wooden house, but it's still got holes in it. You need to weatherproof it. So the Anglo-Saxons covered their houses in mud mixed with poo. Imagine, you're in a big bowl. Get some mud, get some clay. Get some poo. Horse poo, sheep poo, cow poo. You get some, you know, pig poo. Get all the poo, get some chicken poo. The, the Romans brought chickens with them. They left the chickens there. Get some chicken poo in there. Mix it together, shave a horse. Get some hair, chuck it in, mix it up. Get a nice big handful, everyone, get a nice big handful of poo mud, yes, give, give it a sniff, Ooh, lovely. Then you throw it, and you spread it on the houses. And as the sun comes up, the mud mixture dries, and then you have a lovely Anglo-Saxon house. And this is what the farmers, the peasants, would live in. Poo houses. They absolutely stunk. And inside the houses, especially in winter, they lived with their animals. It absolutely stunk. And they loved to grow things like beans. And you know what happens when you eat beans? They make you trunk. It stunk. It absolutely stunk in there. <sighs> really stinky. These houses made from wattle, which is the wood, and daub, which is the clay pooey mixture, were very strong. And each um, summer you could add more poo if you had a broken part. It was fine. But it stunk. They didn't have any windows inside the houses, so at night time it had been really dark, which means they had to make candles, and they made it out of this. Have a look. This is a collection of Anglo-Saxon candles. Look at them. You see, what they would do is they would uh, kill one of their pigs, or hunt and kill a boar, and they would roast the pig or the boar on a spit. And then as it's roasted, all of the fat would drip down, and they would collect the fat and then roll them into candles. And that's what this is. A tallow candle. Pig fat tallow candle. Ugh. It reeks. It's horrible. So imagine, it's winter. It's dark. You've got your cows, you've got your pigs living in your poo-covered house. You light a candle that smells of pig fat. It stinks. You're trumping all the time because you're eating beans. And then, you need to have a drink. You're going to drink water? No way. The water, or the sheep and the pigs pooing in the water. You're not going to drink that, it's disgusting. Instead, you're going to drink beer. Adults, children, everyone. Everyone's drinking beer. Do you think you're going to drink it out of a cup? No. One of these. You're going to drink it out of a cow horn. Yes. The Anglo-Saxon farmer's cup of choice is a cow horn. And actually, that makes sense. Because if you're a farmer and you've got cows and you want to drink, Oh, I'm really thirsty. I could do with a glass of beer. You walk out of your house, there's a cow, you break a horn off his head, get some beer. <sniffs> Lovely. Yeah? It's like going to, you know, like a drive through Costa. Yeah? Except for when you throw them away, you're not going to litter anything because it's just a cow horn. Yeah, perfect. Lovely. The Anglo Saxon farmers loved Britain because the land was fertile, nutritious, they could grow lovely crops. As Anglo Saxon society grew, a new religion began to sweep through Europe. You see, Anglo-Saxons traditionally were pagans. And they believed in Wodan and Thor, Freya, all these different gods. In fact, our days of the week are named after Anglo-Saxon gods. Well, Sunday is named after the sun and Moon Day is named after the moon. But Tuesday is named after Chu, the god of, of battle and war. Wednesday is named after Wodan or Odin. Thursday is Thor's day. Friday is Freya's day. But our days of the week are named after the Anglo-Saxon gods. But they didn't last for long in Britain, no, because a new religion was coming through. And that religion was Christianity. And when Christianity came to Britain, Anglo-Saxons began to build monasteries. And monks would go to the monasteries to pray and live a simple life, yes. And it was the Anglo-Saxon monks that could read and write. 
Monks like Bede would write down the history of the Anglo-Saxon people. And they would write in Latin. Yes. A language from, well, Italy. Yeah. From the Romans. Yeah. And so, you had the peasants and the farmers who would live a very simple, poor life with pig fat candles. And then you would have the monks in monasteries that, although there may be gold in the monasteries, the monks didn't have anything fancy. No, they're cups and things like that. Yeah. Wooden goblets like this. Quite a simple thing, really, isn't it? But they wouldn't be drinking beer from a cow's horn. No, they'd be drinking mead. Honey wine from a nice, simple wooden goblet. For the monks would have a little garden and they would keep bees and uh, they would make honey wine to drink. Down at the bottom of Anglo-Saxon society, you had the peasants, the farmers. They grew the food. They didn't have much, no money or anything like that. They were farmers. And then you'd have the monks. Again, no money, but they lived a simple, pleasant life of prayer, reading and writing. But as I said before, the Anglo-Saxons also had great warriors. Their greatest weapon, and what everyone was fearful of, was the Dane Axe. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is the Dane Axe. A heavy iron axe that would be placed on a long wooden shaft that could be carried with two hands or one hand. Now, with two hands, you could easily crush a shield and break a bone. With one hand, you could swing and cut off limbs. Ooh, it was dangerous and deadly. And people were terrified of the Anglo-Saxon Danax. Even the Vikings were scared of this. It could even hurt a soldier wearing Anglo-Saxon mail. Now, Anglo-Saxons would wear metal chain mail to protect them from swords. Because a sword, a slashing weapon, could not slice through the mail. But this does nothing to a big heavy axe. That would still break your bones, yes. The Anglo-Saxons would also wear leather and pads and they'd have a helmet on their head. Now, I have a very special helmet here. A metal helmet from an Anglo-Saxon king. When the Anglo-Saxons, before they came to Britain, they had little tribes and the strongest warrior would become the king and then the strongest of the strongest became the king of all the tribes. And this was a king that lived in Britain. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Nice and metal. Protects the face. And you know it's a king's helmet because he's got all his decoration on here, yes. Yes, most helmets used by uh, Anglo-Saxon warriors wouldn't have a face shield like this, just a metal helmet there. I look a little bit like an Anglo-Saxon Darth Vader, don't I, with this one? A king would wear a helmet like this. Because the kings like to show off their wealth. Yes. They wouldn't be drinking beer from a, a horn or a, a wooden goblet. No, they'll be drinking mead and wine and beer from metal goblets. And they'll be eating their food off metal plates. Let's have a look. I mean, they've got all the money. All the riches. And so they're going to be eating of the finest cutlery. And of course, they'll also love to wear <laughs> rings. Anglo-Saxon kings and warriors loved rings. Let's have a look. It showed their power. It showed their wealth. They also believed that some of these rings had magical powers. And so, when the Anglo-Saxons came over from Europe, and they settled in Britain, they began to farm, and over time Christianity took over, and monks built monasteries, and you had kings popping up from different tribes, and those kings would make a kingdom, a kingdom up the top of Britain, Northumbria, a king to the east, East Anglia, a kingdom to the west in Mercia, a kingdom down in the south of Wessex and Sussex. And all of these kingdoms got bigger and bigger until one day all those kingdoms came into one. But that's a tale for another time. So, Anglo-Saxons. You could be in a peasant and stinky. You could be holy like a monk. Or you could be strong like a warrior or a king. Strange times indeed. Well, that's all the time I have for this week's Touchstones TV. And that's the end of this series of Touchstone TV episodes. I hope you have enjoyed joining me learning about the past. Until I see you again, don't forget, goodbye, good luck, good riddance. Bye now! <laughs>